We have some new faces here as well. So um, if you guys could please uh, type in the chat, let us know where you guys are coming in from. Really appreciate it. Oh, such a sweet, such a sweet voice. Hello. 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 So it looks like we got we got hair uh, tuning in from from New Zealand. New Zealand's in the house. Welcome. And we welcome. have and we have Brazil and UK. Okay. My niece from UK, her name is Veronica. Okay, welcome Veronica. Welcome, oh, welcome. And my daughter is saying I'm speaking too loud. <laughs> welcome, you guys. This is the AI Global Legends. We got people worldwide. It's good to see all your beautiful faces here today. It looks like we got Mansa Jamil, or the younger version of Mansa Jamil, tuning in, coming from California. We got Wayne tuning in from Winnipeg, Canada, and we got the Mad Scientist tuning in from Rockville, Maryland. Let us know where you guys are tuning in from so I can give you guys a shout out. Welcome to the call, Desiree Wayne from Kentucky. From my garage. Uh-oh, we got the boss lady in the building. We got Nadia coming in from NY, the Big Apple. Got John MB coming in from Cali, San Diego, baby. Welcome, welcome. Looks like we got Tim, my big bro, coming in from North Carolina. And I see another boss on this call for the first time. I see Travis Johnson tuning in from Texas, I believe. Welcome to the call, my brother. This is USPS. Oh, I'm sorry. Looks like we got Andre tuning in from Brazil. Welcome to the AI Global Legends call. And, you know, on this call, you know, we do a motivational Thursday every single week. For those of you guys who haven't tuned in with us, welcome to the AI Global Legends info. And we're always on this channel at the same time, Monday through Friday. On Tuesdays, we do a Team Tuesday. And on Thursdays, we do a Motivational Thursday. And we have a very special guest for you guys today. And if you guys have not heard him, oh man, you guys better get ready for some diamond drops. I hope you guys got your pens and your pencils ready, whatever you need to write some stuff down, because it's going to be, you know, some mind blowing things that you guys are going to hear. And this man is responsible for actually helping me shape my life and my business. I first was introduced to Michael Diamond last year in the month of May. And he came on and did something for the AI Global Legends, right? And after he gave his powerful presentation of manifestation and metamorphosis, that's what I call it, once I was able to grab some diamond drops from Michael Diamond, I actually was able to personally sponsor over 100 people in 90 days for the opportunity that I was working with at that time. So the information that he's going to be sharing with you guys today is extremely powerful. And for those of you guys who don't know Michael Diamond's background, um, he's a world, he's a uh, world-class entrepreneur. He's an international motivational speaker. He was mentored by Les Brown and he's also built several billion dollar companies and he's, uh, you know, he's a world-class trainer as well. So I just want to give a few minutes for people to hop on so you guys can actually, you know, hear our guests for today and, um, just be prepared to be, you know, blown away, prepare to get some affirmations, some powerful motivation, inspiration that will help you with whatever you're going through in your life or your business opportunity and things like that, right? So it looks like uh, we got some more people hopping on. Um, looks like uh, Dwayne is hopping on from Kentucky. What's up, Dwayne? And um, without any further ado, I want to kind of pass the mic on to Michael Diamond and let you guys get, catch some of these diamond drops and see what he got in store for us today. You there, Michael Diamond? I think you're still on mute, Michael. Woohoo! You're still on mute. Can't I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You oh, can yeah. Hear me? We can hear you. All We're right. Ready for some Malik diamond drops. It's ready for some diamond drops. Fantastic. Give, give it to us, Michael Diamond. Malik, congratulations on the new. Congratulations, Malik, on the new baby. 
I really appreciate it. Abundance comes in all shapes and sizes, right? So this is another form Absolutely. of abundance that came good, into my life. God is good. God is good. Praise God. Well, I'm so grateful for your new one. I'm so excited. I missed you guys the last couple of uh, Thursdays. Karen, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing blessed. Thank you so much. That's Ray, I see you there smiling. I see you. Hey! All right. You like well, I'm so excited. Like like, uh, again, like my name is Michael time? Diamond. I'm an international motivational <laughs> speaker, master sales trainer, and expert in personal development. And I'm so excited to be here with you. Every time I have the privilege to be here with you, I look at your faces and you guys look so amazing. I see greatness in you. I see breakthrough. I see success in you. And so I believe this is our fourth or fifth time being together. So as of now, I've invested almost $40,000 of my time and in my heart of you. So I'm anticipating a breakthrough. I'm anticipating, yeah. know that I'm praying for you daily, that I'm standing in the gap for you for breakthrough. So what I have to share with you today, I feel is applicable and it's from the most high God. I intercede to God about what I'm going to discuss with you and what I feel is relevant that he would want me to share with you. And what he gave me today, I am guaranteeing will transform your life forever. Now, I want to drop this on you because I'm excited, and I want to share the title with you right out of the gate, and the title is, It's Time for Your Giant to Fall. See, it's, you got, everybody's got giants in their life. You know, everybody's got giants of depression or anxiety, worry, fear, um, you name it. You've got giants in your life, and they must fall. You know, when I started my campaign, and I'll sort of recap some of it, when I was raising four kids by myself, um, you know, I was earning $569.69 every two weeks, and my giant was a lack of income. My giant was, was depression and anxiety and fear, and I had, it, I had it cloaked. I had it cloaked by a great smile. I had it cloaked with a great attitude, but underneath, underneath it all, I was dealing with the stress and the pressure. And so I know that through this pandemic, even though your smiles are amazing and even though you're, you know, you're, you're meeting your obligations, all of you are dealing with a giant in your life. And, you know, I start out by telling this story when I was in a major accident. Uh, the point I'm making when I was in a major accident, the car hit me so hard. In fact, it was, a, um, it was an SU van. It was an SU van that hit me. I was coming down South Watt, and a van hit me. It hit me so hard. I still don't remember what happened. It hit me so hard, it spun me around seven times and threw me in a ditch. And as I was laying in that ditch, the windshield had busted in my face. And I was afraid. And, and when they finally got me out of the car, they thought I was decapitated. They drug me out of the car, rushed me to the hospital. My face was bleeding. My children were all around the bed. And one of the things that I remember the most is I was so afraid that I would lose everything that I had. And I was, I was so depressed. I was under so much pressure and stress like some of you might be. I was, I was dealing with anxiety like some of you might be dealing with anxiety. And I want you to understand that my goal is not to um, specifically help you to increase your sales. My goal is to help you increase the power of your character so that you will blossom as a person. And as you blossom as a person, you will become more of a light, become more of a magnet, and that everything you say will be trans transformational. Because that is the goal here is for you to become the best version of you possible. Because the reality is, is that it's time for all of you and all of us to discover a larger version of ourselves. And so I want to talk to you about your giant must fall. I'll never forget, I was standing in a window and I was crying. I had lost the business. I was earning $50,000 a month. I had come from earning $569.69 every two weeks to earning $50,000 a month. And I did it by seeing it, saying it, believing it, and receiving it. 
Just like Muhammad Ali, when he took on the, the rumble in the jungle, he kept saying that he was going to take this monkey down. He kept saying it. He said, I could see it. He could see it. He said it. He could believe it, and he received it. That's the formula and the premises that I want you to base everything that you do on. And I want you to remember, as you run towards your dream and you run towards your campaign, that your memory, although it does its best to torture you, your memory is for your recollection and for your records, but your imagination is for your future. Your imagination is designed for you to paint out whatever it is that you desire in life. I want you to have the courage to start dreaming and imagining because your imagination is the preview of your future. And if you can, I want you to get this in your spirit. And I want you to understand there are things that I'm going to say to you that may appear repetitive, but if the power of repetition didn't work, Burger King and McDonald wouldn't run so many commercials. If they felt you got it on the first time, Burger King and McDonald's would only run run commercial and that would be a wrap. So would Home Depot, so would Lowe's, and so would every other commercial you see. So the power of repetition is important. But if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. So you have to see it. You have to see yourself with the weight that you want. You have to see yourself with the income that you want. You have to actually fantasize about it. I remember when I was earning $569 a month, I used to envision myself. I could see it, me earning $10,000 a month. And I would start, I started telling people, I earned nothing less than $10,000 a month. And I've told this story to you before, so it's a little repetitive, but I want you to get it in your spirit. Because what I want you to understand is that poverty is a giant in your life and your giant must fall. And you speak to your giant. You tell your giant it's got to go. Poverty was in my life and I've been delivered from the curse of the law, poverty, lack, sickness and disease. So anytime those four show up in my life, they got to go because you are not what you are experiencing. You are what you are saying. You have made an appointment to be wherever you're at in your life right now. I remember when I was going through a bankruptcy and Les Brown was mentoring me, he said, Michael, wherever you're at in life, you made an appointment to be there. I didn't want to tell him I was going through it. But at the time, I recalled I had made an appointment by my actions, by my lack of diligence, by my lack of focus, by my lack of attentiveness, by my lack of being on top of things, by me being my own anesthesiologist. I had put myself in a position to fail. So again, I was earning $569.69 every two weeks and I started dreaming. I started using my imagination. I started fantasizing about I could earn $10,000 a month. So I started seeing it. Like I want you to see yourself with the weight loss that you want, with the income that you want, with the amount of people that you want to help and transform in your life. I want you to see it and then have the audacity to start saying it as I did. And many started saying to me, Michael, you lying. You don't earn $10,000 a month. You earn $569.69, and that's why you live where you live. And I would laugh right along with them, but I would not let that deter me, as I don't want it to deter you. I can recall vividly the, the confrontation I had in my own mind. I was taking blows. I was taking hits because I was going against the grain, saying something that wasn't my physical reality. But I want you to understand something about your physical reality. Your physical reality is not your true reality. It is your physical reality. It is not your destination. It is not your truth. Your physical reality is where you are like a caterpillar. A caterpillar, as he's crawling over all the terrain, attempting to get where he wants in life, that's not his destination. That's not his true reality. His true reality is to be a butterfly like you. Your true reality is a butterfly for you to soar over circumstances. So as I was earning this $569.69 every two weeks, I refused to take that as my real reality. So I began to speak to that situation as you must speak to your situation. Every one of you have your own individual giant, rather it's anger, rather it's anxiety. Philippians four and six, you are commanded not to be anxious for nothing. 
And the spirit of anxiety will do everything it can to rest in your life. Your, your giants, you've got to identify your giants. In order for you to cross your prism, in order for you to get to your success, you're going to have to kill your giants. It all reminds me of King David, King David and Goliath. All of us have heard the king, most of us have heard the story of King David and Goliath. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. But it was $569.69 I was earning two weeks, every two weeks. It took a year, a whole year it took. And within a year, I was earning $10,000 a month. And it transformed my world. And I started saying, well, you know, I want to earn 20,000. I was like, Lord, you know, I kept saying I want to earn 10. Now I want to earn 20. So I want you to understand that whatever it is that you have the courage to envision in your subconscious, whatever you have the courage to paint in your imagination. Uh, Albert Einstein said, imagination is more powerful than education. Imagination is our most valuable tool. Somebody imagine this Zoom setting. Somebody imagine the, the cell phone you talk on. Somebody imagine the car that you drive. Somebody imagined almost everything that you tangibly engage in was someone's imagination. So the question is, what are you imagining? What do you see yourself having? What are you imagining for your future, your present, and for your family? So that's what I want you to get in your spirit right away, is that you can imagine and accomplish whatever it is you desire. So I started with this accident I was in, and I, I, I said that to say this. I was standing in that window, and tears were streaming down my eyes because I had come from $569.69 every two weeks to $50,000 a month, and in less than 10 years, I was earning $50,000 a month, and I, I'll tell you, I had lost everything. So I want you to understand, I understand wherever you're at. I know how I, I know I know what it's like to be so broke you can't pay attention. I know what it's like to be so broke. I know what it's like to get so excited over government cheese and some grilled cheese sandwiches and some top ramen. You have no idea. So I want you to understand this that I'm very sensitive to wherever you're at. I don't want you to think that I am this illuminated image that has never gone through any tough things, any tough situations. No, I'm telling you from experiences that I know. So I stood in that window and the giants that I were facing, I was facing depression. Depression is a giant. And I command you now to, to speak to your depression, your anxiety or whatever your giant is. Your giant might be fear. Your giant might be your childhood. Your giant might be your thought life. As I shared with you before, you think 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And the caveat is that 80% of them are negative and 95% of them are recycled. So my giant at the time was my thought life. I was fighting my thought life like some of you might be fighting your thought life. You've got to remember that you are in control of your thought life. And I had to fight my thought life because I was standing in that window like many of you may be standing in the window of your life saying, Michael Diamond, I am doing everything I can to be successful, but I've got so much depression and anxiety I'm dealing with that it's hidden. So you've got to take your giant. If it's obesity, if your giant is anxiety, depression, fear, worry, uh, uh, offense, and I know that as I stood in that window, I'll never forget this story. I heard a story once that went like this. Who offended you and stopped you from receiving your miracle? You know, I never forget when I graduated out of high school when I was 16 before I went to medical school. Before I went to medical school, I graduated out of high school when I was 16. I'll never forget my mom used to say, son, you could be a big man. Finish your math, get your bachelor's, get your master's degree. But I was offended in my childhood. I never forget when my mom and dad got a divorce. I was so hurt. I was so offended. I couldn't hear anymore. And I know that some of you may have experienced that where you've gone through situations where you've gotten offended and you know you can't hear anymore. You don't even see the person the same anymore. That's why it's so important that you don't get offended. In fact, for many of us, 
Christ said, I cannot do mighty works because you are offended. So you've got to remember, not only must you repeat this affirmation, and I've shared it with you before, but the power of reputation is appropriate here. I'm speaking the right words at the right time to be effective and super successful. And I want you to say that aloud as I say it, unmute yourself so we don't all get all the voices, but I want you to say it with me. I'm speaking the right words. I'm speaking the right words at the right time. Speaking the right words at the right time. To be effective. To be effective and super successful. And, and super, super successful. successful in every area of my life. In, in every, every area, area of my life. my life. Yes, yes, yes. That's powerful. I took that one and I I repeat that one every day. I'm yes. speaking the right words at the right time to be effective and super successful in every area of my life. Because what I found about success and what I found about being a servant to the people is that you can... You're muted, Michael Diamond. Michael Diamond. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to kind of bounce it around, but I'm going back to the story that may be indicative of many of your lives. So I was standing there in that window and I'll never forget the giants of my life, anxiety, fear, depression, being offended. You see, what got me offended was when I was trying to build my business, the people that I was believing in the most didn't chime in. And I want you to be prepared for that as you run towards your dream, because your, your spouse may not see your vision. The person closest to you, your relatives, your grandma, your, your boyfriend, your children, because God didn't give the vision to them. He gave it to you. So as you're painting it in your mind, the people around you cannot always chime in because they don't see it. They don't have the same conviction. And one of the things I want to encourage you with is don't be offended. You have to practice the art because God said the people perish because of a lack of knowledge and the people without a vision, the people perish. So you've got to get good at casting the vision. You've got to get good at casting the vision. And as I was casting the vision, the people with me weren't catching the vision at the time frame I needed them to do. I was offended. One of my giants was offense. One of my giants was anger. One of my giants was fear. One of my giants was depression. But like King David in the story of David and Goliath, it's a beautiful story, and I would recommend that you read that story. But the essence of the story is there was a Philistine that was nine feet, nine inches tall. He was almost 10 feet tall, like many of our problems are. Nine feet tall. He was nine feet, nine inches, like some of your financial issues might be. Some of your financial issues might be your Goliath, and it's talking to you. And Goliath used to come out every day and he would roar to the children of Israel. He would, oh, come out, I'm gonna kill you, oh, I'm gonna defeat you. No one had the courage to take on Goliath. So that's a question right there that poses on, on part A of it. You've got to have the courage to confront your Goliath. So David, young David started telling people, I'll fight Goliath, I'll fight Goliath. The word got to the king. The king, it went on. Nobody believed David could do it. David told that Goliath, he told, I'm going to take your head off today and feed it to the caucus. I'm going to cut your head off. And David said that he could see it. He could see him defeating Goliath. He could see it. He started saying it. And David ran at him. He ran at Goliath. And he threw his slingshot. That rock got the Holy Ghost on it and hit that man right in the forehead and killed him. So here's what I want. And then David ran up on him and cut his head off and carried it around through the town. So here's what I want you to realize, that you've got to cut the head off of your giant. You've got to cut the head off of your giant. And how do you cut the head off of your giant? Is that you've got to confront it 
and you've got to replace it. Every time you think about, the, every time you start feeling depressed, you've got to say to yourself, I feel good about myself. I'm excited about my life. I'm excited about the direction I'm going in. I'm excited about my future. I'm excited about my life. I'm excited about the direction I'm going in. I'm excited about the direction and I'm decided about my future. You've got to replace your giant with an affirmation. You've got to get it so down in your spirit that when you say it, you say it with conviction. See, you defeat your giant by calling it out. When I was standing in that window, I was depressed and I was hiding the depression. And I had to call it out and say, you know what? I am fighting depression right now, but I'm telling you depression, you ain't got no place with me. I don't receive you. Depression, you got to go. Depression, you are not welcome here. Depression, you don't reside with me. I am the righteousness of Jehovah God in Christ Jesus. You got to go. So you got to, you got to evict. You cannot let thoughts just reside in your mind rent free. You've got to evict the things that are coming against you. When things come against you, you've got to come against them. Anxiety, Philippians 4 and 6, be anxious for nothing. I had to speak to that anxiety. I had to tell that anxiety, you don't reside here with me. I don't receive you. Because in order for you to achieve greatness, you've got to learn to control your brain. You've got to learn to control your mind down to the minute situations when you're dealing with people. And what triggers and what effectively allows you to defeat your giant is for you to be in control of your internal conversation. Have you ever been standing with someone and with a smile on your face and you are as miserable as possible? You see, all of us have had that experience where we got a smile on our face, we, 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 we're laughing at jokes, but on the inside, we're crying. On the inside, we're hurting. And all of that is a response of what you're thinking because what you think dictates what you feel. And what you feel dictates your behavior patterns. Your behavior patterns dictate your destiny and your future. That's why they say, watch your thoughts because they become your words. Watch your words because they become, they become your actions. Watch your actions because they become your character. Watch your character because it becomes your future. See, I, I can recall many a times thinking of, I need to slap this person. I'm thinking, I need to slap you. I just need to slap you. And before I know it, I just slapped the person. So I know that you got to watch your thoughts. I've had thoughts where I've thought about people. I thought like, you know what? I don't really like you. I don't really like you. I don't really like you. And then before I know it, I'm telling the person, I don't really like you. So you've got to watch your thoughts. Like you may have thoughts that you're afraid. You may have thoughts that I'm not going to make it. You may have thoughts that I'm not sure if I can do this. You might have thoughts of insecurities. And what you've got to do is confront them. So as I was standing in that window, I had to identify my giants. And like Goliath, I decided my giants, giants have got to fall. I came against the poverty spirit. And I said, poverty, you got to fall. Giants, you got to fall. I am the righteousness of God. I'm telling you right now, I'm wealthy. You see, wealth is a reflection of what's inside of you. What's in you is going to come out of you. You got to remember that. What's in you comes out of you. Say that with me. What's in you will come out of you. What's in you will come out of you. Get that in your spirit. Know that today your giants must fall. Every time you have a negative thought, you defeat that thought. You say to yourself, that's not my thought. When you have a negative thought, I had to learn. I had to start programming my mind. I would have thoughts like, Michael, what if it doesn't work out? Michael, what if it all falls apart? Michael, what if, you, what if, what if you're a flop? What if you're a failure? What if everything falls apart? What if the kids just go crazy? What if, what if, what if? I had a, a case of the what ifs. And I had to start saying, well, what if everything works out? What if everything works out perfectly? So what I want you to understand is what I had to do is I had to not only speak the right words, but I had to create the right thoughts. So I came with this affirmation. I've shared it with you before,
but I'm repeating it again, and I want to throw this out there. It reminds me of a story of a, a, of a church. They hired a new pastor, and everybody was so excited with the pastor, and he gave his first service was amazing. I mean, he did a great job. All the women and the men and congratulated him, told him how awesome he was, how powerful he was. And the very next weekend, they couldn't wait to hear what his service was going to be. Well, the next weekend came around, and he gave the same service again. Well, they thought to themselves, well, maybe he forgot the service he gave. And so they said, well, pastor, it was great. We enjoyed it, but it was the same service you gave last week. And he said to them, yes, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, the next weekend, they were excited, anticipating something new. He gave the same service again. He said, wait a minute. They said, wait a minute, pastor. We like you. We like you. We're glad you're here, but you keep giving us the same service. He said, why should I move forward when you're not doing nothing? I told you on the first service. So <laughs> you've got to understand that in order to achieve your greatness, you've got to get it in your spirit. This one I got in my spirit because I had committed to myself that they said that only a genius, genius is used from 5 to 10% of their DNA and of their mind. So then God gave me this one. The dormant 97% of my DNA has been activated. I now have full access to the full potential of my brain and full access to the full potential of my DNA. The dormant 97% of my DNA has been activated. I now have full access to the full potential of my DNA and full access to the full, full potential of my brain. The dormant 97% of my DNA has been activated. I now have full access to the full potential of my DNA and full access to the full potential of my brain. You see, you've got to get them so down into your spirit that when you say them, you say them with conviction. Your affirmations and your commitment to yourself must be like when I was in that window. When I was in that window and I was crying, everything was hinging on it. I had five homes, everything was falling off. I was losing the homes. I was going through personal issues. I was standing there watching everything dissipate, everything dissemble, everything fall apart. And I don't know if you've ever seen everything crumble in your life. I feel comfortable that maybe you have had some situations where you've seen everything fall apart. But in this particular incident, I saw my income come from $50,000 to being so broke I couldn't pay attention. And I thought, do I have what it takes to do it all over again? Can I do this? Do I, can I make this happen? And I had to dig down deep like I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to dig down deep. Dig down deep. Confront your giant. Confront your fear. Confront your anxiety. Don't walk around with a phony smile on your face knowing you're fighting depression. You fight that depression. You tell that depression it's not, it's not welcome here. Every time you get that feeling of being depressed, you call it out and you speak to it. And you say to yourself, I am not depressed. Depressed, spirit of depression, I loose you from your assignment. You got to go. Every time you find yourself being anxious, and dealing with anxiety, you speak to that anxiety. And you say to that anxiety, you got to go. Because as long as you don't have a white chalk line etched around your body, it's a great day. Somebody, somebody had a white chalk line etched around their body this morning. You didn't. So you're having a great day. Somebody's locked in the hospital right now. Can't even brush their teeth. You brushed your teeth, hopefully. You brushed your teeth this morning. <laughs> You brushed your teeth this morning. I hope you did. If you didn't, you're on my list. But I'll tell you what, you brushed your teeth. <laughs> you brushed your teeth on your own this morning. You put your own clothes on this morning. I'm telling you, today is a blessing. You got to find the blessings and the breakthrough. Somebody is dying of COVID-19 right now on a respirator. Some nurse is exhausted and trying to help families make it. We've got almost 130,000 families that have passed. 
You've got to, I had to stop and smell the roses. I had to learn to appreciate the fact that even though my circumstances were talking to me like a gorilla eating a banana, I'm telling you, my circumstances were all over me like ugly on an ape. And I'm, I was fighting them. I was, woo, I was like, oh, I was fighting them little monkeys off of me. I'm telling you, I had little monkeys running all over my back. I had fear running over my neck. I had little monkeys of anger and anxiety riding on my back like I was a junkie. I'm trying to tell you this right now. Malik, stop laughing so hard. I'm trying to tell you right now that you can make it. You've got greatness inside of you. You are in control of you. Your mind is not in control of you. You are in control of your mind. And as I sat in that office, as I stood out looking out that window, like some of you might be looking out of the window of your life or out of your mind saying, you know, Michael Diamond, you talk to us, you get us motivated, you get us fired up. But honestly, during the course of my day, I do deal with depression. I do deal with anxiety. I do deal with low self-esteem. I do have suicidal thoughts. I do get stressed out. I do deal with anger issues. I do have giants in my life. I want you to confront those giants. And I just want you to remember this, that you're thinking the right thoughts. You're thinking the right thoughts at the right time. You're thinking great thoughts. I've said this to you before, but I, I send my spirit to give it to you again. Because you've got to regurgitate them and get them in your spirit. You've got to get them. You've got to say your affirmations like this. I'm thinking great thoughts that support great ideas. And I'm getting great things done. And you've got to get that kinetic action. You know, you ever see Michael Jordan when he got that big shot and he's like, yes, yes. Everybody remembers Jordan doing yes because that kinetic injury, inner energy connects to your memory. And so you've got to get your convictions and your affirmations and your positive thoughts of yourself down to a conviction like, yes, I'm thinking great thoughts that support great ideas and I'm getting great things done. You've got to get this one in your spirit deeply. So I'm, as I'm standing in this window, I resolve to myself that I will not fail. I am not going down. I am not going down with the ship because the ship ain't going down. I'm the ship. And I started calling it out. I started saying I earn nothing less than $50,000 a month. I earn nothing less than $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month. I started saying the right people are coming into my path with the financial resources that I need. The right people are coming into my life for me to be a blessing to. I am committed and I am convicted. I am convicted and committed to excellence. I started saying I'm living a life of excellence and I'm practicing championship habits. Write that one down. I am living a life of excellence and I'm practicing championship habits. If you're gonna be a champion, you've got to practice championship habits. And you've got to look at your habits because where you are right now is a reflection of your habits. I know that I can be a little habitual on television. I like the news. I like to catch and see what's going on in the world. But I have to remember that I have to divide my time. I cannot sit and watch news for hours on end. I've got to develop myself. If you're going to be a champion and you are a champion, you have got to develop yourself. You've got to remember, I am living a life of excellence and I am practicing championship habits. It was about four weeks later, within that month, because of what, what I want you to understand, the moment you speak it, it happens. I want you to understand, say that with me. The moment I speak it, it happens. The moment I speak it, it The moment happens. I speak it, it happens. The moment, the moment I speak, I it, speak it, 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 the moment I speak, I speak it, 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 it happens. happens. Right, right, right. I want you to get that in your spirit because sometimes we say, well, you know what, Lord, I asked you, I've been begging you. Lord, I've been begging you. No, he heard you the first time. It's like your mama. I'm in my kids. I never forget this. Now, I just, I mean, my, my kids, they, you know, when they were young, they're all grown now. I, you know, I'm 790 years old. My children are about 400 years old. 
Anyway, my kids, they would get home from school. <laughs> my kids, my kids would get home from school and they would be like, my first son, my oldest son would call me and be like, Dad, are we going to the mall tonight? You said you got paid. I'm like, wow, these kids know when I get paid before I get paid. They're like, I know you got paid, Dad. Are we going to the mall tonight? And are we going to get some tennis shoes? I'm like, yes, son. I'm with a client right now, so don't call me right back, but we're going to the mall. Then two minutes later, my youngest son would call. Hey, Dad, Sean said that we're going to the mall and get shoes tonight. I'm like, son, I told him to tell you, don't call me no more. You kids, don't call. I've got a client. Don't call me back. Don't call me back. Three minutes later, my oldest son would call me. Hey, Dad, I'm just calling to see, because my Dale said we was going, and I told him, son, I told you we're going to the mall. By the time they call me fifth time or sixth time, I'm like, we're not going. You got to understand that the moment you say it, it happens. But what happens with most of us is that we say, I'm going to make it. Then we turn around and say, you know what? I am so sick and tired of things. Girl, I'm so sick and tired. I'm so sick and tired of this. I'm so sick and tired of that. Now, your mind don't know which way to go. You're saying, you know what? I'm excited. I'm successful. I'm breaking through. I'm thinking the right thoughts at the right time to be effective and super successful. And then turn around and say, I'm so depressed. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I'm telling you, nothing seems to work out. I'm so frustrated with my life. So you've got to control your mind. You've got to put a watchman. You've got to pray for God to put a watchman before your mouth. And because you've got to understand that when you speak it, it happens. You have been made in the image of God. He said, let there be light. And there was light. When you say it, it happens. So I started saying, breakthrough is happening. The, the right people are coming into my path with the financial resources that I need. The right people are coming into my path with the financial resources that I need. It was 30 days of me making that affirmation. Somebody came through and said, hey, Diamond, we got an opportunity downtown for you to have seven suites with no pay. Seven suites down on 7th and J Street, right in the middle, the heart of downtown Sacramento. Seven suites with no pay. The guy said he's going to give you a few months, no pay for you to get on your feet. I'm telling you right now, I'm here as a messenger to, to reaffirm to you that you've got greatness in you. You are going to make it. And as I was standing in that window talking to my giants, you must talk to your giants because I'm here to tell you today, your giants must fall. Your, it's time for your giants to fall. Your giants must fall. Your giant of anxiety. Philippians 4 and 6. Don't you be anxious for nothing. Remember that your giants must fall. Your giant of depression, anxiety, worry, fear, anger, being offended. I'm telling you, your days of being offended and angry and frustrated and angry at everybody and your kids is over. Your giants must fall. When I talk about giants, it reminds me of a story with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, everybody knows Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. Give me some KFC. Woo-wee, I'm getting hungry right now just thinking about it. My lips started watering when I said, Karen, I see you laughing. My lips started watering when I said KFC like that. I got wow, well, I, I broke a sweat thinking about some KFC. I got to go downstairs and order some. I'm telling you that chicken, that chicken man, that chicken, chicken George. Anyway, the KFC, that guy, I'm, miss, I'm getting all messed up. But Kentucky Fried Chicken, everybody knows him as this successful man. But what they don't realize in most instances, he was 65 years old, sitting under a tree, ready to commit suicide, kidnapped his daughter, had failed at almost everything he put his hands to. The one thing he was good at was his chicken recipe. He was under that tree, ready to commit suicide. And I know that feeling of just saying, I can't do it no more. Raising four kids on my own, I'd have had some moments, y'all. I'd have had some moments where I'm ready to just push them all down the stairs. Y'all get outside and play. 
Kentucky Fried Chicken. And you, when you see Colonel Sanders, he's not this vibracious, handsome young guy like some of you guys are beautiful. And no, he wasn't all that. He was old with gray hair because he was old and he was tired. He was 65 years old, ready to commit suicide. He was struggling with depression and anxiety. Everything had fallen apart in his life until he did what I'm asking you to do right now. He made his mind up. He started speaking to his giant, that his giant must fall. He said, I'm not going to deal with this depression no more. I'm not going to accept this anxiety. I'm going to give it one more try. Colonel Sanders said, I'm going to give it one more try. And what I'm asking you to do now with, with Kentucky Fried Chicken all around the world, the franchise is a billionaire. He was a billionaire. He came from being broke. He was earning $205 a month. Can you imagine 65 years old earning $205 a month? The man was broke. He was considering suicide and finally said to his giant, I'm not going to accept depression. I'm not going to accept the anxiety. I'm trying one more time. And what I'm encouraging you now, and we see Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm still getting hungry, y'all. I'm getting a little salivative here. I, I got to get some chicken. But he came from earning $205 a month to a worldwide franchise and becoming a billionaire by the time he was in his 80s. I'm telling you that you can make it. You've got greatness in you, but your giants must fall. You must come against those spirits. Do not tolerate them. Every time, remember that you think 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, 80% of them are negative because of all of our ne negative experiences. They keep regurgitating themselves until you stop them. You have the ability to stop that 80%. That's the caveat, but that's for work. You've got to work on you. The biggest giant that's got to fall is you. You have got to reinvent yourself. That's what I had to do. The biggest giant I had to take down was me, my own habitual habits, my own habitual words, the things that I was programmed at as a child. Kentucky Fried Chicken took his diamond, took his giant down. David took down his giant and many others. Oprah took down her giant. Muhammad Ali took down his giant. Thomas Edison, after failing 5,000 times, dealing with depression and anxiety, they told Tommy, look, Thomas, you've created so many different things. Just go ahead, give up, it's okay. Thomas Edison said, I haven't failed 5,000 times. I've only discovered 5,000 ways that don't work. Went on to be the most, one of the most successful men in his time. I'm encouraging you speak to your world, create your world. I want you to see it, use your imagination as your paintbrush. I want you to paint a beautiful imagination, paint a beautiful life. I want you to know that that spirit of obesity, people I heard somebody say that was 300 and something pounds that lost 150 pounds. Before they lost it, their excuse was, this is what their excuse was, I'm just big boned. I'm just, that's the only reason why I'm eating two buckets of chicken and I'm eating two cakes at night and two bags of potato chips because I'm big boned. You got to stop making excuses for yourself, okay? The second half of 2020, I'm going to challenge you because I've made the commitment. This 20, the second half of 2020, Corona's virus, everything going on, I'm going to have the best half of a year that I've ever had in my life. This second half of 2020 is going to be the most prosperous, the most developed, the most exciting, the most rewarding, the most fantastic six months I have ever experienced. I'm telling you, God is going to do a great thing for you. I am praying for you daily. So I want you to remember, your giant must fall. Your giant of depression, fear, anxiety, worry, depression. Your, your, your giant of being offended, your days of being offended are over. Next time somebody says something you don't like, let it roll off your back like water on a duck's back. 
Every time you get anxious, I want you to think of Philippians 4 and 6. God has commanded you to be anxious for nothing. Don't you allow nothing to bring anxiety inside of you. When you start getting anxious, you think of Philippians 4 and 6. You, I will be anxious for nothing. So I want you to understand, I'm going to share this last story with you, and then we're going to wrap it up because I'm excited. I mean, I think I might have to get me some chicken. So anyway, um, this... Uh, <laughs> So anyway, there's this, there's this world-renowned surgeon. I mean, the guy is renowned. I mean, he's amazing, like you. The guy's a genius, like you. And uh, he has this massive heart attack. And so reporters and, and the media, everybody's in front of him. They're, they're ushering mics in his voice, in his face. And I never forget what he had to say. They said, well, what advice would you give to people that are working their heart out? and that they're fighting for their families and they're under pressure like you. What, would you, what advice would you give? And he simply said this, don't sweat the small stuff and remember it's all small stuff. In order to play in the big leagues, you can't sweat stuff. You've got to be anxious for nothing. Anything that presents itself as a giant in your life has got to go down. And it goes down by you seeing it, saying it, believing it, and receiving it. You speak to your giants. You ain't got to get no knife out and stab them, because sometimes you want to stab them, but you speak them out. You curse them. You tell them. You, you speak to that situation. You see it just like David, King David. He saw himself taking Goliath out. He started telling everybody, I'm going to kill Goliath. He believed it in his spirit, like I want you to believe it in yours. And then he took his head off. I want you to see it, say it, believe it, and receive it. And like I did in that window, when I was crying with tears running down my eyes, I spoke to that situation. I said, I'm not receiving this spirit of anxiety. I'm not receiving this double-mindedness. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to receive this spirit of depression. And believe me, that depression was on me like a little monkey running all over my neck. I'm telling you, I had to speak to those spirits. I want you to speak to that spirit. I want you, I want you to remember every time you're dealing with it that your giant must fall. Nothing will hold you down. You be successful. You speak it. You see it. You say it. You believe it. And you receive it. Know that you can speak to your world, create your world, and create all the beauty that is in you. Because everything that you desire is in your gift. It's in you. I want you to know like Kentucky Fried Chicken, and I don't want you trying to cook up some chicken tonight. And if you do, save a piece for me. But I like Kentucky Fried Chicken. I want you to take it down like he did. He was sitting under that tree ready to commit suicide. And he said to himself, I will not die. I'm going to try one more time. And I'm encouraging you to try one more time. And I guarantee you that you will be successful because I got your back. My name is Michael Diamond, international motivational speaker, master sales trainer, and expert in personal development. And I'm telling you, it's time to play a bigger game. It's time to reach into the lion's mouth Malik, this is for you. It's time to reach into the lion's mouth. Take what belongs to you. It's time to shatter through your glass ceiling, reach in the lion's mouth, and take what belongs to you. My name is Michael Diamond, and I'll see you in the winner's circle. Wow, that was powerful, Michael Diamond. We really appreciate you coming through and dropping those golden nuggets for us, a.k.a. the Diamond Drops. Man, I hope you guys took some notes and I hope that you guys got some of those affirmations down. And these things are so, so powerful. I use affirmations every single day and I have so much abundance flowing into my life right now. And this is just one example of abundance that I could show you guys. You see this? It's just one example of abundance. I don't worry about money issues. I don't worry about anything because you know this man, Michael Diamond, has poured so much energy and inspiration into me and I just receive it and I put it back into the universe. So I hope you guys got some good value from this. And um, we really appreciate your time, Michael Diamond. And um, for those of you guys who don't know, Michael Diamond will be here for, for uh, 
dropping his diamond drops on Motivational Thursday. So make sure that you guys tune in, same channel, and we'll be here to do another Freedom Friday for you guys tomorrow. Go ahead, Michael Diamond. Malik, before we close, Karen, do you have anything for me? Does, does anyone have any questions for me as it pertains to strategies on taking your giants down? And what giants are you facing? I want to hear some of the giants that are in your life that you've got to take down. Mr. Michael, this is Victor Pierce. I would like to talk with you about this uh, racial reconciliation. It starts within all of us individually, but to co collectively bring the love of the rainbow, is that's what brings us together is love. Yes. And to share that with one another, I have a plan, I have a purpose, and I'd like to talk to you about that. Please, sir. Oh, Mr. absolutely. Um, I want you guys to go to my website. Anyone that hasn't received my gift of how to bounce back and finish strong, go to www.michaeldiamond.us. Go to the contact page, send me an email, and I can respond to you. I do want to share this, that this Rainbow Coalition, this... Uh, this, uh, this movement that's happening right now, Victor, is a beautiful thing. And I would encourage, you know, I was fortunate enough in my life that my dad, you know, I'll never forget when I was a kid, I was turning on the TV and Governor George Wallace was, you know, standing in front of the college and didn't want, you know, African Americans to go to school. And I thought it was so pathetic. And, you know, I would, as a kid, I would see, you know, them sicking the dogs and watering and beating people down. I never forget my dad told me, turn that TV off, son. He said, let me tell you something. Not everybody that looks like them are that way. There's beautiful people in every race. And there's yes. ugly people in every race, son. Yes. There's yes. ugly black people. There's ugly white people. Yes. There's yes. ugly all nationalities. And because of that, I had a very successful military career. I've had a very successful business career. Been the number one top producer in multi-million dollar corporations, number one top producer in three multi-million dollar corporations. And some of my best friends are Nella brothers, my Asian, my Hispanic. So, yeah. you know, as we love on yeah. each other and we embrace each other and we know that there, we call on the good angels in everyone, that we will be successful and we see the best in everyone. So, Victor, please reach out to me. I'm here. Desiree. What what giants do you need to take down, Karen? Go ahead, I'm, Desiree. I'm, I'm dealing with um, a lot of stuff right now, Michael. And, um, you know, I just recently, well, you all know I have a, a grandson that's autistic. He's with me right now. But uh, he seems to be getting, instead of better, seems to be getting worse at times to the point where my son is talking about possibly putting him in some form of institution where he can be able to get the type of care that he needs because it's hard for him to handle him sometimes. So I've been dealing with that and the idea of it. And um, I just, I broke down really, really bad uh, yesterday and I had to go and get him, but, um, you know, it's, I'm doing everything that I know to do to help my grandson, but um, that's something that I'm struggling with right now. And uh, I've got to talk to my son to see if he'll possibly just let me take him. And that way I can continue to possibly give him what I feel that he needs that's going to help him. And, um, you know, just being able to stay focused where I am right now in my business, it's been um, a struggle, but I'm working on that because I know that I can do this. And, uh, but you know, you were talking about uh, the doubts and the self doubt and all of those type of things. You, you go through that when you're dealing with situations, you know, and um, it's, I've, I feel defeated sometimes when it comes to situations like this. And I'm just really, really 
fighting to keep my head above water as the expression is. But, you know, when I got him to sleep last night, I set up all night long on my computer because I'm trying to get things going for myself, for my business. So I can be able to be in a position, like Malik said, you don't have to worry about finances. You don't have to worry about having this to be able to take care of that. You know, I'm not there yet, but I will be, you know? And that is, that's where I'm fighting to stay mentally. So yeah, those giants, I have to take their heads off. And it's yeah. something that I'm, I'm dealing with that every single day. And we're in this challenge right now. And it seems like ever since we got started with this challenge, it's been something even more so on top of everything else that I had to face. But, you know, everybody goes through something. I'm not unique, you know, but I pray to my God, Jehovah, to give me the strength that I need and the steadfastness that it's going to take in order for me to be successful and get to where I'm, where I, where I envision being. And so, Absolutely. yes, it's, it's a struggle. And like I said, we all go through something, but. Well, I want to you respond know, to that. I want to okay. respond to that, Desiree. And I'm so glad that <clears throat> this assignment, this piece of work, this series I'm going to be working on, uh, your giant must fall. I want to talk to you. I want to regurgitate and uh, sort of um, paraphrase what I'm hearing. From yes. You. Your yes. your situation with your son, with your grandson that's wrestling with autism is among yes. millions of other families dealing with this. And so very much so as just as I was talking about, your circumstances are talking to you. And so when your circumstances talk to you, you got to talk back to them. Romans 4, because I'm in love with Jehovah God as well. I'm in, I'm in love with Jehovah El Shaddai, God Almighty, the many-breasted one. Jehovah Nissa, the banner of victory. Jehovah Bel Perazim, the God of the breaking. Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of the battle. So yeah. I'm in love with Jehovah God in the name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus all of you guys Christ. are in love with God and you may have mm -hmm. another name. But so Romans 4, 17 says, even God who quickeneth the dead, who bring dead to life, mm -hmm. even God who quickeneth the dead, calleth those things that be not as though they were. <clears throat> so you got to speak to that situation. <clears throat> that situation is speaking to you. <clears throat> You got to speak to that situation. You got to call okay. him. You got to call him healthy. Yeah. You can yeah. call him whole yeah. because yeah. the power of life and death yeah. is in your tongue. So you yes. got to, and like you said, yeah. I'm just keeping my head above water. I want everybody yeah. to listen to this because we're not, yeah. we're not isolating anyone. We, although we all have different names, we are collectively one people yes. sharing one energy yeah. and sharing one breath. If oxygen were to disappear for all of us, we would all we struggle are, with the same are, situation. Yeah. So we are yeah. all of one people. So this experience that Desiree is having, you're all having the same one. She just spoke first. So I want you to speak to your situation and call him whole, call him blessed, and call your circumstances. Your circumstances are speaking to you you say, even though I'm confronted with this situation, I'm a winner. You're a winner, yeah. baby. Everything's yeah. going to be all right. I don't know yeah. how, but I'm going to call those yeah. things that be not as though they were. I'm yeah. grandmama, and we're going to be all right. You're going to yeah. be okay. And you're not yeah. under the circumstances. You're above the yeah. circumstances. Your situation is speaking to you. You speak back to it. And you say that we are blessed, Deuteronomy 28, I am blessed the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in and blessed going out. Everything I touch is blessed. You got to speak to that situation. You speak to that autism because you're in love with God and every name is under the name of the feet of Jesus Christ. You put that under your feet. You speak to that situation and you say, hey, baby, you're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. That's what courage is that you can speak the best into a situation in your worst of circumstances. 
That's when you really know that you're beginning to turn the corner is when you, when you find yourself confronted with the worst of circumstance. I've got a son right now that's in a very tough situation. And when he talks to me, I tell him, son, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You're doing a great job. He stopped me the other day. Dad, I ain't done nothing right in a long time. What you talking about? I'm doing you proud of me. I said, son, I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You're really doing a great job. And I'm telling you now, the success of my children is, my son called me today. My oldest son told me, he said, dad, he said, dad, I'm telling you, I got to tell you about a miracle. He said, you, I know you're praying for me. Guess what happened? So we got to be so uh, fanatical. I want this team to become fanatical. You got to be fanatical with your belief system. That's what transforms you. So though you're dealing with that autism, yes, you, you put a licking on that autism because you're a champion, Desiree. You're a winner. You are a champion. You got greatness in you. And you, I'm telling you, you, you plug into Jehovah God and you call yeah. on him and you make your petitions known to him because he is the God of more than enough. He is Jehovah El Shaddai, yeah. God Almighty, the many-breasted one. His all sufficiency is more than capable of superseding all natural events. In the second book of Kings, I want you to read Second Kings 3. 16 where Elijah stood before the Lord of hosts and he said as I stand before the Lord of hosts that liveth he told them you ain't gonna see no wind and you ain't see no rain but God is gonna bring the water and in the feeding time he told them dig those ditches and in the morning in the feeding time that water came behold and like Moses he told Moses in a he told Moses Jehovah God told Moses in numbers of 11, 23, is, he told Moses, has the Lord's, he said, and the Lord said unto Moses, has the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now that my word shall come to pass for thee or not. I'm telling you folks, God is real. You speak to your circumstances. Yes, he is. Desiree, all of you, you speak to your circumstances with a conviction. And when your situations are dealing with you, you deal with them. I remember I used to pull my wallet open and my wallet used to laugh at me like, there ain't nothing in here. 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 And I had to talk to that wallet and say, wallet, I will slap you upside your bald head. I am wealthy. I am blessed. I am blessed in the city and blessed. I slapped that bald head wallet and threw that wallet across the room. I'm telling you, your circumstances your circumstances will talk to you. You got to talk back. Karen, Desiree, you email me. I'll send you some good stuff. Karen, what giant you fighting? You feeling better, Desiree? Yes. I'm feeling better already. Fight. Okay, Karen, what's better. going on? What giants you fighting? Well, actually, I've been working on this stuff for a good year, and I'm finally I'm having breakthroughs. And... Um, Last week, I had breakthroughs every day because I spent about 25 hours working with Tony Robbins, doing the homework, yes. and having breakthrough after breakthrough. Yes. Because about a year ago, I wanted to leave my husband because we've been putting up with all of his fatal illnesses since 2012, and some okay. days you just can't take it anymore. But I am right. transitioning. Right. Um, yes. I got into this concept where I am divorcing my old story of fear and I'm rewriting yes. a new story. And yes. something happened a couple days ago. We had an anniversary Monday and a very nice day and a dinner. Tuesday, we oh, were in the hospital. Thank you. We were in the hospital for three hours having a stat, another stat CAT scan of the brain. And for okay. the first time, I mean, he's often gets rushed to the emergency room, hospitalized and goes to surgery. And I sat there for three hours and I was calm. I had no fear and I knew in my heart, whatever the outcome was gonna be, we were gonna handle it with dignity and grace and acceptance. And I've never felt that strong that way before. And I'm just so grateful. and. 
You have a lot to do with it. I forced myself to commit to Tony Robbins. I show up for my team meetings. I work my mindset and I'm finally seeing big light at the end of the time. And I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. That's amazing. I am, I'm so proud of you, Karen. And that's so important that we divorce ourselves from our old story. Yeah. Okay, because that's what's that's a part of the eight sixty to eighty thousand thoughts that we think every day, and eighty percent of them are negative. And when we have that old story that we've been telling ourselves our whole life, and I have to say, Tony Robbins is absolutely amazing. I love him. He's an icon among icons. Tony Robbins is awesome. I aspire to him. I have his work behind me, and I want you to stick with him. He's amazing. Amazing. And I'm so glad to hear your success. And I want you to keep speaking to your circumstances. And I'm so proud of you. Again, congratulations you. for the Thank anniversary. You. And you're looking hot today, Karen. I like your hair. You're showing out, girl. You're showing out. You're showing out. Okay, Elite, what giants are you fighting? Unmute, Malie, Alif. Leave what giants un 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 unmute. Are you talking to me, Michael Diamond? Um, no, I, I was talking to uh I may not Atif. be a T. A T. Okay, Atif. Go ahead, Atif. Atif. Unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, I apologize for the mispronunciation, of T. No problem. Can you hear me? What giants are you fighting? Right now, I think it's just um I think it's just focus and just, just managing time because I'm working as well, working and busy around the kids. I think it's just, just I think it's just mindset, mainly mindset. I think 80% 80, 80 is just the mindset. And then just working on my habits, working on my daily habits to get the right results. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's important, Atif. To aid you in your time management, make sure that you're tracking your time. You want to make sure when you're focusing on time management, all of you, that you don't, conf don't, you don't, it's easy to confuse activity with accomplishment. So you've got to tr track yourself. This is how I was able to dominate in the workplace because I had four kids I was raising by myself. So I had to be able to get done with my, I had to do in four hours what my colleagues were doing in eight. But most of my colleagues messed around most of the day. So you've got to be very vigilant and frugal with your time in terms of managing it so that you maximize the moment. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes does a whole series. and He has a book called Maximizing the Moment, which I feel may be apropos for you in this situation, so that you're truly in your moment, so that when you're home, you're giving quality time so that when you excuse yourself and you may only – still an hour you may still a half hour but you make that a half hour what most people accomplish in four hours you maximize that moment and make that half hour a three hour impact because of your concentration and your focus okay Fantastic. okay malik malik what giant you fighting baby Man, the only giant that I'm facing right now is that I have a big goal. My, my, my goal is my giant, right? So right now I set a goal for myself to hit $100,000 in 60 days. So every single day I do an affirmation and I say, today is going to be an incredible day. I'm super excited. My team is growing. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. Thank you, God, for blessing me with $100,000 in 60 days. And I've been having so much abundance that's been flowing into my life. I'm in the hospital and I'm making $1,000 a day right now. So I think I can hit my goal, but um, it's still a giant that I have to account. Okay, Malik, what I'm still so a proud of you. I appreciate that. I am so proud of you. You have made leaps and bounds of progress you're taking on the biggest giant. That's yourself. You're structured. You're organized. You're, you're, you're fighting through it. I am so proud of you. And you're 
absolutely. When you look at that hundred thousand dollars that you're going to earn in sixty days, you start congratulating yourself that it's done. Call those things that be not as though they were. In last night's study, and I'll say this because I got to wrap up. The guy that was mentoring me was saying, "Listen, I want you to hold this um, mango seed in your hand, and I want you to see the mango in your hand. You only have." the seed diamond but see the mango see the mango so i want you to hold your seed whatever it is that you aspire to see the mango hold the seed but see the finished product and call it done connie what's your your giant connie are you with me who is who's who's the brother from uh um, uh, Brazil, is that is that you, Atif? I thought I heard Brazil. Tracy, no, um, I got time for one more person to tell me about their giant. I think Andre is the person from from Brazil. Are you there, Andre? No, Dragon. The man yes, scientist. Too, but he doesn't speak. Uh... <laughs> the mad scientist. The mad scientist. I'm here. I'm here. I'm I heard mad scientist. I okay. Hear <laughs> mad scientist, talk to me. Well, my name's talk actually Matthew. We're going to wrap it after this. We're wrapping. Okay. okay my mad name's actually scientist, Matthew, talk but, to me. Uh, that's what everybody calls me. So anyway, um, you know, obviously, I honestly, I would have to say my biggest giant yeah. is just reaching, reaching out to more people. That's it. That's what I, that's definitely what's um, the giant that I'm facing. It's just being able to reach out to more people and talk to more people every day. That's it. I think that that's really the only thing that's, I feel like is standing in my way. Okay. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, what I'll say on this in closing, and we got to wrap, we're over the hour. I do apologize, but I get so into you guys. I just want to give you as much of me as I possibly can. When it comes to reaching more people, it goes back to what Malif was saying. It goes back to what I shared with you earlier, <clears throat> Romans 4, 17. You've got to call those things that be not as though they were. You've got to start saying, I'm helping more people. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm just attracted to people. People are just attracted to me. I, when I start talking to them, they really like my voice. And so you've got to position yourself because typically you don't speak to more people because either there's some insecurities you're wrestling with, like, you know, hey, what if they don't like me? What if, what if they don't, what if they don't want to hear what I have to say? Oftentimes we are our own detractor from what we want to magnetize to us by what we're thinking. And I'll close it with this story. I remember about 700 years ago, <clears throat> and I get a little raspy after I've talked so long, but about 700 years ago when I was, it was my goal to dominate this multi-million dollar corporation and be the number one top producer. I remember when I used to answer the phone <clears throat> and some of the down payments, I was a licensed insurance agent. Um, mute your phones, mute, mute for me, mute so I can get this last story out. Um, when I would tell them about their down payment, some of their down payments were $750. <clears throat> and I never forget, you could hear in the tone in my voice, like, okay, well, your down payment is $750. And I'll never forget this guy said, okay, no big deal. I thought it was going to be $1,500. And I realized that I was selling out of my own situation. Like, I don't have $750. I'm even afraid to even tell the guy $750. So I say that to say this, that sometimes when we're approaching people, we're thinking to ourselves, I don't know if I'd want to hear about this. I don't want to interrupt this person. I don't want to intrude on them. And in essence, they really do want you to, people do want to be interrupted. People do want you to say, hey, how are you doing? I've got some great news for you. I've got something I think you'd really like. Because at the end of the day, um, the 
arc, the business itself, is just a beautiful connector. People want to be connected. People want to have some point of connecting, whether it's Olympic arc or it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody wants to run across the freeway by themselves. Nobody wants to check class by themselves. People want to be connected. So you will attract mad scientists. You will attract more people because you are the mad scientist. And you've got great ideas for them. And you've got a wonderful smile. So just remember, you will cut up what you believe and just knowing that people want to be connected. And that's going to be your umbilicus to connect with more people, okay? We're gonna wrap it up, gang. It was beautiful. I want everybody to unmute for just a second so we can wrap it up. I wanna hear your voices. Much love. Thank you, Michael Diamond. Once again, dropping Thank you, Michael. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Michael. Thank you, 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 Michael.